How you doing? Moon Davis. Oh, hello. I've heard your music. I've heard many nice things about you from Jim and Gene and from others. <laughs> you have not heard one nice thing about me from Gene. No, you don't want to go anywhere. And that's why all the same shit is going to keep happening to you because you want it to. Is that why? Yes, and also because you're an asshole. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's been a 007 back for a 10 minute spoiler free movie review and today I'm discussing the new Coen Brothers movie, Inside Lewin Davis, which I was so excited about. I thought this was going to be one of the best movies at the London Film Festival this year. After all, I love the Coen Brothers, I love their screwball comedies, I love their dark, deep, brooding satires. I'm just a huge fan and I love folk music, so a Coen Brothers movie about folk music, that won the Palm d'Or, the highest award at the Cannes Film Festival. I was like, man, this is just going to be it for me. This is going to be absolutely it. But my word, I was so disappointed with this film. It's like sometimes they write these movies that are goofball comedies and sometimes they write these far darker, more subversive movies. But every now and then, the Coen brothers write these films that are basically just taking a decent person and beating him up for two hours. And this is what Inside Lewin Davis is. It's it's quite similar in tone, I think, to A Serious Man, which is another movie that people really love, but I just found really difficult to get into. It was kind of like a take on the Book of Job, and it just just punished it just was bruised upon a blow it was horrible anyway the same thing happens with inside lewin davis it's basically a great folk soundtrack album in search of narrative i mean there's just like nothing happens in this film it's set in the week of a life of lewin davis who's the struggling folk singer and basically he's just you know sleeping on people's couches and struggling to get a gig and he doesn't have enough money and it's winter and he's cold and everything he touches just turns to misery and ashes and he pisses off good friends he pisses off his family anyone that would try to help him he's just like a one-man wrecking ball of his own life so what happens in the movie well he struggles through new york for a couple days he um decides to go up to Chicago to audition for this manager who might turn his career around. The guy basically tells him he's not commercial, so he comes back to New York and he decides to give up on his folk career. And it's doubly ironic because even giving up his folk career and deciding to become a a merchant mariner again doesn't work out that well. And also he seems to be giving up just at the point when the whole Bob Dylan folk revolution's taken off. So basically this is just two hours of watching this poor guy getting beaten up It's kind of like cinematic sadism. I've seen reviews that describe it as funny and sweet and wry, but I just don't see that. I mean, there is, there's this sort of cameo from John Goodman, the classic Coen Brothers John Goodman cameo halfway through this movie where he plays this really boorish, loud-mouthed guy with whom Lewin Davis is driving to Chicago. And yes, that is funny, but it's kind of like totally unrelated to the movie. And it just sort of comes and goes and gives you a bit of comic relief and it kind of, you have a bit of, you know, you just ease into it because you're so desperate to cling on to anything that seems like sort of action and character at this point. And then it goes and you're like, oh, okay. And there's other kind of incidentally funny bits. Um, Adam Driver from the HBO Girls show is really funny. He kind of um, plays one of the singers on a track um, that's done with Justin Timberlake's character. And that's kind of like a spoof pastiche of how stupid and nonsensical some of the popular hits in the folk genre can be. And that's really funny. But, you know, it lasts for two minutes and it's it's game over. And I'm not saying that every single Coen Brothers movie needs to be hilariously funny. But even in the movies that are being kind of existential angst, they've typically had a lot more narrative and a lot more character-driven events than this. I mean, thinking back to A Serious Man, which, again, I didn't like particularly that had far more of a sense of narrative drive and of, you know, the the events culminating in something catastrophic for the main character. Whereas Inside Lewin Davis is just on this even note all the way through. It's just this sort of plain chant dirge of misery. And I'm sorry, I'm just not into that. I don't like seeing that kind of cinematic sadism and I'm not interested in putting myself through it in a masochistic way. I just do not get the praise for this film. It doesn't even have that classic Coen Brothers, very stylized, heightened cinematography where you have those very carefully choreographed push-ins and the way they use the camera very deliberately. I mean, yes, it's, it's nicely shot. 
it's there's nothing wrong with the film in terms of the acting or the shooting style, but it's just not memorable. And the production design is this sort of, you know, snot green bruise colour. Oh man, it's just unrelenting. So, as you can see, I'm not a massive fan of this film. I mean, Oscar Isaac is definitely brilliant. I mean, it's his best acting work to date in a in a short career. And, you know, the soundtrack album is fantastic. I'm going to buy the album immediately, but this is not the movie for me. And if it's trying to make some kind of profound point about how talented people often don't make it and banal popular music does, I mean, Jesus Christ... I think we all have figured that out by now. We attend film festivals. We know that the popular movies are not always the best. Um, so I'm not sure what this film is telling us. I'm not sure what it adds to the Coen brothers' oeuvre. I admit that I'm going against the flow on this. This movie has won awards and praise and everybody loves it. And, um, you know, if you see it and agree or disagree with my take, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear why you loved it and to have my own view challenged. And I will try and watch it again when it comes out because I'm sure... I am missing something horribly here. But in the meantime, thank you for listening, and I'm sorry I couldn't be more positive.